Welcome to the NEC near Birmingham for the Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show. This is the full report. So we're gonna take a more detailed look around. Uh, it's still the Friday as I film this. We've got three days to take in the show, have a bit of an explore and take in some of the wonderful cars. Now obviously this is our stand. There's currently a gentleman trying to reattach the headliner in Betty, my Ford Fairmont. That's the car I drove around New Zealand and imported to the UK just last year. So it's very, very fresh. Well, let's go and see what else is about. So on this stand, we've got cars that have been restored and have been picked out of episodes, or episodes, editions, copies of Practical Classics magazine uh, for the restorer of the year. It's a very interesting uh, marina. It's had the door handles removed. It's got the original triplex laminated windscreen. Uh, and it's apparently got a T16 turbo engine out of a later Rover 200. So uh, that's an intriguing car. Uh, but look at this Porsche 914. We saw one recently in electric classic cars. Uh, the mid-mounted air-cooled four-cylinder engine. Uh, some of them did have a six-cylinder engine. Uh, beautiful Manta GTJ here. That's a lovely car. Weirdly, Opel Mantas and Vauxhall Cavaliers were sold in the UK. But when the Mark I Cavalier became the Mark II, uh, the Opel Manta continued as the Opel Manta. A lovely Lotus Elise here. We've got some lovely Escorts here. Look at the, how beautifully illuminated this uh, Mark II Escort is. It's got uh, poverty spec written all over it. But it's got a 1.6 litre engine, apparently. And it is for sale. Griffiths Imports. That's a, a beautiful car. Obviously come from a climate that wasn't the UK. Uh, moving over here, back to that stand, we've got a Mark II Golf, very nicely done. A fairly early Mark II Golf, because it's got left-hand drive wipers. They did change them in about 1987, I believe. And an MG T-Type Midget, a TA. Lovely cars, with the gear levers sort of buried underneath the dashboard. Uh, this is a pre-war car, I think, the TA. Um, but the T-Type Midgets, hugely popular post-war with the uh, American servicemen who came to the UK, fell in love with these cars and took them back to America. And uh, Series 1 Land Rover looks very beautifully done. Indeed, always intriguing cars. So right behind our wonderful collection of um, shambolic cars, Ferrari 308 Mondial, £60,000. How times have changed. Uh, those cars were kind of seen as a hubnut Ferrari before hubnut existed. Uh, cute little pair of minis here, odd autos. So odd autos have also got some cars we saw before. So see my NEC show report for some of the intriguing cars like this Auto Union Thousand Coupe. Um, but over on the Carol Nash barn finds, I've been desperate to come and look at this. Mark V Ford Escort Estate. It's an SI, which got the sportier RS snout. And uh, whoa, what's going on here? That's surely a recipe for bad luck. But I mean, the Mark V's generally are so rare, but this one's an estate. Now, weirdly, oh, rear wiper's missing. I, I am traumatized. Weirdly, I think the tailgate door from the back of these was used on an Aston Martin. Uh, this was doing the rounds on social media before the show. It's an Amer American spec Jaguar XJ Coupe. So it's got um, all amber rear lights. It's got uh, huge federal bumpers and the front end sort of preempts the Mark III. But should we go in for a closer look? That is um, crusty and beautiful patination of the metalwork. Uh, I apologize if the image is flashing a bit. This camera not awfully keen on the lighting here. Look at BMW 1800, the Neue Klasse. A car that really did sort of drive BMW forward. It was the start of them doing sort of premium, yet fairly small cars. That's a lovely example there. So they're going to have a competition here on the Carol Nash barn finds to um, see which one people like most, I guess. The Austin Healey Sprite. A reminder that the MG Midget was initially an Austin Healey. 
uh, Hillman Husky Mark One. So uh, Husky is well, it's um, more like a comma cob, really, because it's got the rear windows panelled in. But it looks like it didn't have originally. And uh, MG wheels, they fit surprisingly well. Lime green Escort Mark One Mexico. I bet that's got people frothing. But look at this Jowett Bradford uh, ice cream van. So the Jowett Bradford, uh, designed and built in Yorkshire, uses a flat twin engine, water cooled, but uh, almost like uh, a 2CV really. Slightly rotten mini. That is so, so very cute. And uh, I'm all for restoring cars, but in a way, it would be a shame to restore that one, I think. And this is nice as well, an Austin LD Luton van. Luton referring to the style of box on the back with the area over the cab. That's brilliant. I like that very much. Uh, over here, a very interesting car. It's an Austin Westminster hearse by the look of it. Uh, sadly in need of a fair bit of restoration, I'm going to say. But uh, hopefully it will be restored. The big six cylinder C series engine, the Wolseley uh, illuminated grille. So that's a Wolseley 610, I think, based on the Austin Westminster, but slightly more plush, but not as plush as the Vanden Pla version. Uh, land crab here. Um, I must do a video on a standard land crab. Uh, this one's obviously got a displacer issue. Uh, which is fitting so when i drove an austin kimberley in australia i blew that very displacer i don't even know what this is but apparently it's got a sierra badge on it it's lost its epic curved windscreen uh, it is a dodge a dodge sierra station wagon look at that that's absolutely enormous marvelous and uh, also like in the allegro here uh, which I believe still has the Quartic steering wheel. A lot of people asked why the um, the one I drove, the Allegro I drove, didn't have the Quartic wheel. And the answer is simply that not all of them did have a Quartic wheel. They phased them out a few months before the one I drove was built. Now, to a lot of people, this is a dream sporty Ford, but uh, I quite like probes myself. The probes, which we shall come to, basically have Mazda MX-6 with uh, a slightly different shape but I, I prefer the probes I think you've got the pop-up headlights quite funky things two litre four cylinder and uh, two and a half V6 I think that's a lot of valves and camshaft oh Ford Corsair estate next to a Ford Corsair convertible next to another Ford Corsair estate and this is what's great about this show is that you can come and see stuff going on people are actually restoring the cars at the show and uh, God, they're doing some serious work here got the um, V4 engine and another convertible to round that off and then an amazingly colorful selection of Mark IV Cortinas that's great to see and a fairly colourful Mark III there with a vinyl roof in blue. Very nice. Uh, Ford Console Classic. Very intriguing car. And the first Capri. That's the uh, Console Capri. Very interesting, very stylish in a way. Trying to ape America, but not a huge sale success. People were a bit unkeen, I'm going to say. Uh, another Crayford conversion here, like those Corsairs, I think. The Cortina Mark III. Hello, I believe you're wearing a disguise. It's keeping very still. Uh, Mark I Transit, that's a absolute beauty. Lovely to see one of these restored. Evidently had a lot of work. It's got a bulkhead there just behind the driver's seat. It's got sliding side doors. And uh, yeah, lovely cars to drive, these early transits. Or lovely vans to drive. Uh, Capris. For people who like Capris, more Capris. Uh, these people have been restoring this car for several hours and don't seem to have moved very much. Uh, very slow workers. Oh, Mark One Transit camper van with uh, bonus points for the tiles, by the way. Uh, that's very lovely. I think we've seen the custom Transit 
behind it before. But uh, they all wear custom badges. Oh my gosh, maybe we haven't. Look at that. Motown Gold. This, this was such a thing in the 1980s when I was a child, custom camper vans. Wow. Even got a tilting sunshine roof. So that's good. Side valve forwards have got plenty going on as well, uh, including engine removal by the look of it. So there is the flathead side valve engine. Uh, aha, that's Ed Hughes, who owns many interesting cars and writes for Practical Classics. So they've got a demo area here where they do various jobs on various cars and uh, you can watch them uh, using the English wheel to uh, make panels, lots of technical stuff going on. Uh, it seems to have finished for now. Uh, trade stands are plenty of course, including Draper, who early, earlier lent us uh, a pump to pump up Betty's tyres. And down we come into Hall 5. Usually my favourite hall of the show, it's where all the cool stuff is. Look at that! Uh, a probably bagged uh, W115 or 114 Mercedes. That's really cool, but uh, I'm also loving the Maestro van here. Lovely. Uh, Mark 1 Capri. We've got an MGB undergoing some work here. Uh, this is what I love about it. You can just see stuff going on. Uh, Z, Z Register here. Uh, it's got a ZR, a ZS and a ZT. Okay. And we've got Zs over this side as well. A ZS 180 with the um, V6 engine. We've got an M MG3 here, uh, future classic. Two of them, in fact, because there's another one. And uh, standard motor club here. Oh, right. that's a pre-war one. I don't know what that is. Uh, but behind it, there's a lovely uh, Vanguard with overdrive. So this is very similar to the estate I drove when I was in Melbourne. It's got a floor change. I'm guessing there's a police club in here, uh, just a guess. There's a Vanguard Vignali. Um, but over here is a, a companion, I think these were called, based on the standard 10. And uh, if the engine looks familiar, that's because it's quite similar to a certain Reliant engine, but we won't talk about that too much. And they've got a, a bustle back, or it would be a bustle back uh, Vanguard if it was a saloon. This is the estate, that's really nice to see restored to a very high standard. This Metro we have seen before, uh, a Johnny Smith's late brake show in Manchester. Very, very low mileage. I forget how low, I'm sure it'll tell us on this information here. No, it doesn't seem to say, but we've got, that looks like Ian Cook's work. But uh, yeah, it's just absolutely beautiful. I can't see how many miles, I, I know this was transported here because it's got so few miles on it. And I can kind of forgive that. Yeah, nice collection of metros of various types. Uh, oh, is that Ed Westby's twin cams? I think it might be. It's 1.1C. It's the bottom of the range model uh, next to a sprightly MG metro pairing or trio even. In fact, we've got all the MGs going on, including the turbo. And uh, just a reminder what a cool looking car the metro was. Definitely one of the better things to come out of British Leyland. Over here on the Gay Classic Car Group stand, we've got an Armstrong Sidley here. Uh, is it Typhoon? I think I have driven one of these. Uh, it's a Hurricane. I knew it was something wind related. So uh, that is quite the beast of a car. Next to a Renault Espace, uh, built by Matra, uh, fiberglass body, Renault Mechanicals, uh, one of my absolute favorite cars. Now here's a car you won't see very often. Betty is not the only Australian car in the show. We've got a Chrysler Valiant here. And I am chained to the owner, he lives in Wales. So uh, at some point we will be doing a test on this car. So uh, see someone else is getting excited about the Espace. Uh, so yeah, hoping to introduce Betty to this car at some point. Uh, Citroen XM with a V6. 24 valve engine, I think that's the ES9 engine, uh, Saab 900 convertible, or is it 93, sorry, um, undergoing some work here. Uh, there are desperate attempts 
to save an Austin Maxi going on over here on the gay classic car group stand. Uh, it, are you going to be able to save it? Yeah. 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 Was it clutch? Yeah, all the hydraulics. Excellent. Um, suspension's now up. Yeah, excellent. Is it staying up? Yep, staying up. All we fixed. Beautiful. So yeah, all good. Excellent. Good to see progress. Uh, oh, Sunbeam Rapier. Tested one of these recently with the um, Plymouth Barracuda esque styling. Very, very, very cool cars. We've got the ADO 16s here. Various types. Morrises and oh, that one's got all the lamps on the front of it. That's the MG sporty version, the Walsley version, which of course has the light up grill badge. Now we're turning over here, a little mini and the oh, headliner. That reminds me, I need a headliner in Betty. Uh, MG Maestro in lovely condition and a princess in Reynard Metallic, uh, which I think is the best color for a princess. It's got the six cylinder engine. But was first seen in the Austin Kimberley in Australia. Uh, what we got on the Rover Sports Register, a very colourful Rover 800. Uh, panning around. Oh, you can tell I'm in paradise now, can't you? Rover P6 Club. Oh, I used to have a late Series 1 myself. Uh, Wolseley 680 here. That's really, really nice. It's got the overhead cam engine, the old Nuffield 6. Really, really cool. Uh, discoveries, G-Wax we have going on here. Uh, called G-Wax, unsurprisingly because of the number plates. Uh, but these are very early discoveries from the first year of production, the first few months. And uh, I think we're often pressed demo cars or development vehicles. And I just love the side graphics on the Land Rover Discovery. Uh, here's another G-Wax, sadly without stripes. But uh, I just love discoveries. I think they're amazing looking things. More Maxis when you can shake a stick at. For me, I'd have a Maxi 2, like that bright yellow one there. And uh, yeah, th these are all uh, vehicles owned by uh, members of the CVC register, I think. Uh, so it's uh, to pick up all the press cars. So again, we got BAC, it's a Silhillian number plate. And these are all the accessories you could get on a Freelander. That's great to see. Don't want to think about how long ago it was since the Freelander was launched. Uh, but that's a 1997 number plate. Oof. And there's this car on the front of Auto Car Magazine. So I love that they uh, save these cars. Uh, over here, work going on on the SD1 club stand. Uh, of course, we now know that the VAS has headlamp wipers. That's what we now know. Uh, let's go over this way. Uh, it's nice to see so many of these here, the Rover 200. That's the VI. Uh, the VI got the variable valve timing, um, also seen on the MGF. Uh, we got Tomcats here, the Coupes, and uh, various engines available in these. Uh, two litre fours, there was a turbocharged version as well. Yeah, it's great to see. Nice collection of cars. Uh, 1381 Motor Club. Uh, I don't know what that signifies, but uh, they've got a nice mix of cars. Rover 800 Club now accepts 600s. So the Rover 600s actually have somewhere to be. And that, that's great because I love Rover 600s. They are great cars. Sporting Bears over here are... Uh, giving people the chance to pay a donation to charity and go out in a really nice car, like this Rover, Rover? MG BGT V8, that's sort of fancy Aston Martins, Rolls-Royce Corniche, Ford Mustang, and a little Fiat 500. So let's see, here goes the MG BGT V8, a very rare car. Excellent, that's great to see. And supporting good charities is a good thing to do. Classic caravans. Just for Miss Hubnut there, she'd love these, I'm sure. Uh, we've got some uh, nice Cavaliers here. A Mark One, which of course is so similar to the Opal Manta. And uh, I always love these, the GSI 2000, the hottest of the Mark III Cavaliers. 
and then a Mark 1 in uh, lovely condition as well. Um, I thought we got another Holden for a minute there, but I think it's a Vauxhall Viceroy. It's another badge engineered version of the um, Vauxhall Carlton and Senator. Uh, we've got Bedford HAs, they're seriously cute things. And we'll go down here, we've got the Heinkel Trojans, done a video on that very Trojan. In fact, that has already been done. Lovely Renault 5, that's great. The Renault 5 is 50 years old. Can you believe it? It's such a good shape. I love it so much. So uh, that's lovely to see. The Renault 21, which I think that 21 was at the uh, the NEC show, the main NEC show, but it didn't actually appear on the stand. It was just there to deliver. Uh, Renault 19, absolutely lovely condition. Renault 25, again, really, really wonderful. Over here, two CVs. And uh, if I give you a bit of height, you can see the color of the two CVs. Obviously, there's a note to our friends in Ukraine. We are hope uh things will settle down there soon enough over here we've got citroen car club apparently they have been firing up the um, ds to do suspension demonstrations at times we've also got a cx here oh look at that beautiful barn find hello everyone yeah cx we can get underneath and have a nose if you fancy and uh yeah h fans mm. There's a live stage in Hall 5 as well, where they've been doing various things over the past few days, including, oh, they're having a chat with people at the moment. So Foxan is not the only Blue Reliant here. Uh, members of the Reliant Owners Club are helping Practical Classics reassemble this Reliant Rebel van. So uh, it was a complete box of bits, and they're slowly assembling it. Hope is that will be running by Friday. So stay tuned to see whether that happens. Oh, look at this, a Nissan Cherry Europe. Oh, Alfa Romeo Arno, which one is this? Uh, this is a Cherry Europe. So uh, that's good to see, we've driven one of those on the channel. And if we swing around, we've got uh, Ed Hughes, who we saw earlier on a big screen in Hall 4, uh, owns this IZH2126. Uh, unsurprisingly, Sam Glover is involved in the collection caper here and uh, dearly departed Julian Noel. But uh, yeah, you think my car fleet is odd. Ed Hughes takes the absolute biscuit. Uh, I don't even know anything about this. So um, like me, you'll all be heading off to Google to find out what on earth this is all about. A slightly intriguing car. I've never seen one before in my life. Uh, tell you what I'm liking over here though, apart from the Tatra, with its um, air-cooled rear-mounted engine. Is that one a V8? No, flat four, I think. It must be a little Tatra. Uh, Audi 100, look at that. That's a lovely car. But yeah, these Tatras, you see you've got a window, two windows separating the engine compartment from the interior. So that's a lovely car as well. So three years ago, I was on the Lancaster insurance stand. Uh, this year, they got um, a police XJ40, a Fiat 127 facelift, which is apparently for sale. And they've replaced me with a Honda Acti camper van. Uh, I happen to know that the boss of uh, Kelsey Media is involved with this. And uh, I am hopeful of doing a video on it at some point. It must be miserable because as you can see, it has a four, 545cc engine and 28 brake horsepower. Yet they reckon it'll do 65 miles an hour. I feel that needs testing. So uh, yeah, liking that very much indeed. Uh, Lancaster Insurance also has the pride of ownership where um, some of the best cars get picked uh, to come and uh, be on display and a winner will be chosen. So we've got a Sand Glow, Allegro, Ford Cortina, Lotus. Uh, I don't believe any of these actually came in this paint scheme. I think they actually came in a standard metallic, but the Mark I Lotus had that paint scheme and a lot of people like to emulate it. Uh, we've got this uh, Metro. I was just showing to the owner of this um, MG Metro. It's a lovely example. Mark I Golf. And Nissan Bluebird Turbo Executive. 
uh, built here in um, Sunderland, uh, in Sunderland in the UK. A Bluebird Turbo, so uh, that's quite impressive. An enormous Mustang, a Ferrari 348, which gives us a pantograph wiper moment. Delightful little linkage going on there. Mm. Uh, we've got another British Racing Green Austin Rover product, the MG Maestro Turbo with the Tickford body kit and turbocharged engine. Ferociously quick cars. Uh, so it's a Celica, uh, a little MG midget and uh, a Humber. What Humber is it? Is that full on Super Snipe? Yes, it is because we've got the bonnet icon. It is a Humber Super Sniper State. Uh, I think possibly one of the first cars in the UK to have quad headlamps. And we've got another Ford Probe over here as well. Now, there's lots to see at this show, and uh, it seems to be taking forever to get absolutely nowhere. Um, Austin A30 here, very, very nice van. Uh, Austin A40, and it looks like it's a sports, but there's being. Um, oh no, it's a, uh, it's a Hereford drophead, or possibly a coupe. Interesting. This is a sports. As you can quite clearly see, quite a lot of it is, in fact, missing. And we'll go over here, Saab Enthusiast, Saab Owners Club, sorry. Always have a good display of cars. We've got the GM era 900. Uh, quite good cars. Yes, headlamp wiper moment. There'll be many of them along here. Uh, Saab 900s in various conditions. Uh, nice turbo there, but oh my gosh so much brown all of the brown and uh, very nice Saab 96 there and a Sonnet uh, based on 96 running gear and in just lovely condition and uh, a fairly late 96 they were the chunkiest lights they ever fitted to them that is it for part one of this video report join me for part two in a future video